unsubscribed healthcare and I want to go over my workflow. I know a couple of you guys have been asking this, so just real quick, on my website I have a place for you to schedule. You can make individual buttons for each individual practitioner. People can click on it and then click on your name and time that you want to schedule and then they're able to self-schedule. You can add other things here such as address and stuff, um, which is important for me as a mobile therapist. I always ask that. And then consent to treat here is also another one. We come down to the bottom. You can see that you can also embed both of these things directly into your website if you wanted to. I find that the buttons work best. Um, in my intake forms, I need a few things. Subscribe. Healthcare. I need the email. I need the first name. We're going to do Maxwell R. My last name is Shippen. And then I also need the... Um, patient ID. Today is the 27-2022. Um, and so the patient ID identifies this case particularly. We'll go through real quick and we're just going to add in a bunch of stuff. I've added in a lot of extras here for like medications and past medical history because it's easier to add than it, or it's easier to delete than it is to add. But you can see again, level of health, spouse and social support, who you're currently living with, current adaptive equipment, other uh, treatments for this condition, things I want to be able to do, current level of pain. We'll say that it's for my head and neck. Symptoms started yesterday. Unknown cause. Did not have surgery. John Smith is my doctor. No x-rays or anything. Here's an example of HIPAA notice and privacy practice. You should put your own in here. And again, here's an example of informed consent. You should put your company's own informed consent here by checking this name and typing your name. Um, it is a valid signature. With the eSign Act of 2000, they qualified electric signatures. Electronic signatures has the same validity as a wet signature. Um, there are certain rules that have come out to further improve upon that, but as far as the eSign Act is concerned, by checking that box and typing their name counts as an electronic signature because they have the intent to sign. I'm not a lawyer though, so talk to a lawyer about that and make sure it's valid in your state. Coming over here, again, HIPAA acknowledgement, financial responsibility, assignment of benefits, cancellation policy, and access to and release of health information. You should put in all of your information here that you need them to read and sign as well. And then I'm going to type my name and I'm going to click submit. When we come back here, you can see Max Shippen has already been formed. That was a while ago, but as we wait, now Maxwell Shippen has been formed. That was just a test run. Now it's formed, you can see that it is forming and bringing over all of my templates. The way that this works is that you can put in your own templates. You can put in anything that you want. But if we go to templates, PT templates, you can see it has SOAP, TMD, upper extremity, and PDFs. If you have your own documents that you want to drop in here, it will copy everything over. So you do not need to use my own templates. You can use your own. Go back to patients, PT 2022, Maxwell Shippen. And you can see there's also a PDF of their subjective and consent to treat. Um, this you are able to update and customize yourself. Um, you can put your own logo here. If you update the questions besides the first four, you'd be able to uh, change them over here and do your own. Right. Let's go into it quickly, though. When I come here, I want to allow access because that's going to connect to my data center, which has all of my patient information as well as all my shortcuts. If I want to click... Here are the email um, notifications that I have, authorized visits, MD appointments, last authorized date, and schedule more appointments. I also have end of um, end of the current plan of care on the newest one. We're going to click advance so that we can authorize this script to do everything that I want. I wrote all of this. It does need all of this stuff. So now that we did that, we have to click it one more time, run in the script. And then you can see, now that it's disappeared, we know that I have email notifications. I'll need to add in my email down here. Once it's confirmed, it will um, send an email at 7 a.m. And again, all this stuff is customizable. But if I want to just do uh, the patient, we're looking for Maxwell Shippen. So you can see that it's not here. 
and that's okay. That's because we didn't do a patient intake yet. But we don't have to go anywhere. We can just do patient intake right from this one screen, which is nice. So I'm going to click here, Maxwell Shippen. Okay, you can put in the phone number. You can put in all this information. This stuff can't be changed, unfortunately, because it goes along with the CMS 1500 requirements. And so I, you can't change this one, but you can change the other one. Okay, um, again, we'll just fill this in quickly. All right. I'm going to say the subscriber itself, and then we just need to come down here and then see um, primary insurance. So we'll put in Blue Cross Blue Shield, and then our numbers are 54321. We'll come down a little bit lower. John Smith is my physician. He's referring me. MS 12272022. And we said the neck. So we're going to click Submit. I exit out of that. Come back here. Maxwell R. Shippen. And then you can see here. MS 12272022. Now it brings all of that information forward. Using these little collapsible columns on left, we can make everything look nice. Um, we're going to put in cervical, so we can type it in and search it. If we need to add more, we can just come up here to the data center, add ICD-10, and you'll be able to add it. Um, service location we'll need. I do it in the patient's residence. Data service, we'll say it's today. And I also need to put in my name because I'm the one treating. Um, say now I want to jump down to the patient's objective. I just click on the subjective and it jumps right down to it. So we'll get to it. Um, again, you can create shortcuts for all this stuff. Um, and, you know, it pops right up. So it's pretty pretty helpful, pretty convenient. Um, but again, coming down, you would fill in all of this stuff. Um, all this stuff will carry forward onto all of the other sheets as well as the evals and reevals. Since we're doing cervical, we'll leave this up, but we're not going to be doing hip and stuff, so we're going to follow this to the left. And since this is one above the range of motion, and we want to collapse this whole thing, we're going to click right in the middle of one here. And you can see that whole thing collapsed. We do want to keep special tests for the shoulders open, but we're going to minimize the knee. Click on that minimization. There you go. We're not going to do wrist. We're not going to do elbow. And I'm going to be lazy and click up here. Click on within functional limits for all of these. We'll do within normal limits here. Strength, we'll say, was 4 plus out of 5 on the left. Or 4 out of 5 on the right. 4 plus out of 5. And 4 out of 5. Um, if you didn't do, like, AdSense test, you could do some test here. And then it will carry forward onto the eval or the Rx note sheet as well. But we're just going to click a bunch of random ones here, three and three. Let's click on palpation. I know I have that. So lumbar spine, and we'll just change that to cervical. Again, coming up here to shortcut menu, subjective or objective. Scrolling down to palpation. I could add in one. All right, click Submit, then come over here. Now you can see severe tenderness with palpation to suboccipitals is there. I'm going to minimize these so it looks nice. Assessment, again, you'll be able to put in your own assessment, whatever you want, patient education, all this stuff can be customized. Um, add in your short-term and long-term goals. Minimize to make it look nice. The 
they weren't that difficult, so we're going to just do a simple difficulty. And then we want the patient coming in two times a week for eight weeks, and the end date will automatically update. Flow sheet, the more you use it, the more exercise and stuff you add, the easier it is to do. Um, this all calculates out too, so if you wanted to say this was like nine minutes or eight minutes, click enter, and now you can see exercise time has been updated for that CPT code, so it makes it easier if you're coming up here to like your super bill, and you're like, okay, I want to um, do prompt pay adjustments so everything is the same. And I, how many therapeutic exercises did I do? Well, you can come back here, click on eval flow sheet, brings you right down the flow sheet, and you can say, oh, 14. Okay, so I just did one unit. There we go. And now you can make your adjustments that way. So it makes it a lot faster to quickly click on it. Um, but yeah, now that I've finished my eval, I'm going to click on this button to say that it was me who did it. And then I'm going to click on Save as PDF. We'll go back into my drive for this patient. And you can see if I click on PDFs now that the PDF has been created there. So it makes it very easy. It automatically creates the PDFs there. If I was going to do a treatment or a progress note or anything else, I again would need to choose the therapist treating. There's the treatment date, progress note, or discharge. I can change it based on that. Using the same idea from before with the collapsing columns on or collapsing rows on the left, this is all a progress note, a discharge note, and a treatment note all in one. You just need to minimize what you're not using. So if we're not going to use it for a um, progress note right now because it's the only first treat, we're going to happily close all those columns and then we can keep these open if we wanted to. We don't have to. If I want to add in authorized visitors, visit states too, that's really, really simple. Just come up to data center, do the authorization. So this one is a little bit tricky. I had to program it last name first um, instead of uh, first name and then last name. So sorry about that. I know it is a little, a little confusing. 2022. End of authorization date, we're going to say next Friday. Start of authorization date was yesterday. The treating therapist is myself. And we can see Blue Cross Blue Shield, not Medicare. We don't need to worry about action. Authorized visit number, we're going to say like 23. Why not? Okay. Don't have to worry about these things. Click submit. And now you can see it automatically puts it in there. One visit has been used. Um, and then I would fill in my subjective. You can see the red here. So it's trying to say, like, you need to fill it in. Once you have something written there, it automatically turns back to white background. Um, but everything carries forward from before. So again, 10 minutes, 3 minutes. If you add in more exercises, you'll be able to select more of them. Um, and again, this works for therapeutic activities, neuro, you can now see neuro is updated before, uh, gate training, so it all updates automatically and quickly and calculates it for you. Um, but yeah, so once I'm done writing that note, the process is just click on copy and name, and I would do like Rx1, and then I click OK. If I needed to do an addendum of this, I would click copy and name again, and do rx1 addendum and click OK. Because that way when I click here and I click save as PDF, I'll have Maxwell Shippen rx1. And then if I messed up, I'll go to the addendum and then I'm going to click save as PDF. And now you can see it will say Maxwell Shippen RX1 addendum. And then that way I know exactly when I made the changes and the information is all kept here and it's not lost. So I can see the difference between the first one and the addendum. Um, but then I would come back here to uh, the progress note and I'd be able to keep writing for the next treatment and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the process. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know.
but there's so much more that you can do on the PT data center, like clearing house, bill tracking, and everything else. So I hope this was helpful for you. But everything that you need doesn't have to be done anywhere else but on the patient menu, including that if I was done with the eval and I wanted to schedule more visits, I just click on my menu, and then I have um, my menu to the right on the calendar button, and now I have my calendar. So I can go ahead and schedule. You can view it by the month. You can view it by the day. Um, if you have uh, Google Voice, you can answer your phone calls from here. You can do everything. You can write yourself a little note, like fax somebody or anything like that. So I hope that was helpful. Um, this is, again, just showing you kind of the work, workflow of it all. But I hope you guys had a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.